not it's not gonna, it's not gonna be super formal it's like I spent it for Caroline. Uh elastic life is roughly based on this idea of elastic time, which came about as a I don't know, maybe like a decade or so ago when I was being a freelancer and I was internally feeling like a little bit like protective of my time. Uh, and I think I was also fascinated with some of the ideas from college and like that. Built stuff to say about the world. And so I was already sort of on board with the idea of time being a concert. And uh, it started to feel like part of the problem was people calling my time as their time. And that this kind of universal concept of time is kind of problematic to see. And then, um, since it was based on like railroads and logistics. Uh, it solves a specific problem for us so that machines arrive at the same place at the same time. But I think as we get more and more accurate with that, that people are subjected to machine time, we naturally have a bit of a negative reaction towards it. Uh, I don't think we like sharp corners, precise increments, one minute till the next meeting, that kind of thing, the pandemic, I think it's extremely scarring for people. I haven't done a great deal of research about it, but it seems pretty obvious. And so, the last big time and the last big life are really like theoretical responses to other people like, sort of coveting my time. That's the overt story. Um, and so I, I wanted to sort of explain this concept, and for me, time was a good way to start to think about it for myself. And so I thought, like, can I make an alternative version of time that breaks everyone's concept of time and gives me a kind of freedom that feels better? And that was kind of the surface area I started with. And um, my core objective was to say, this place that I occupy, this space that I have, is my space, and no one else could be here, so how could I reflect that? Uh, how could that be valued? And so, in kind of the traditional sense, the most traditional sense, time is like uh, to be. Uh, it, it, before we have watches, uh, we have sundials, uh, before we have sundials, we have just our our reaction to, uh, to the world, uh, just as any animal reacts like that. Uh, and so, and I feel like we're pretty far from that now. And so this system of time is based around light. It's a metric time system that takes your longitude and latitude and figures out, based on where you're standing, if we divided the day into 10,000 pieces, and at night it's 10,000 pieces, uh, what you see for you is the passing of this time uh, in, in the daytime. And the moment itself extends and compresses based upon where we are and, and what type of part of the year we're in. So it actually flexes. The idea is that we calibrated ourselves specifically in relaxing in time at an increment of, let's say, uh, one one hundred or something like that, but the panel curve has the time. So like for, for us, a block is a hundred moments. We're watching the moments go by. And if we calibrated ourselves each day to a passing of a hundred moments, burning a block of time so that we feel it's synchronous with the world, this may be a way of aligning ourselves very precisely with the world, but also potentially by creating this time, we are also creating this time for other people in the sense that each of our time is our own. And that today is really like a precious commodity that we've already started to look for. But that tomorrow is open because it doesn't happen. It's not here, it's not arrived, it's not a thing that we need to worry about so much. So like, what if we could exist in our own time and our devices can tell us where we need to be a place could abstract away all of this hard edges and places. 
at times, and it can make our life soft and elastic. Uh, I think in a way that feels organic and natural. Sweet. Based on that, I am kind of working on elastic focus and a bunch of other elastic type of ideas. I like the word elasticity. It's grounded to me in concepts like responsive web or maybe even like the concept of tag as opposed to folder. To me, the web enables these ideas, these sorts of flexibility, these layers of adaptability, and they're completely constructed, but they're abstractable uh, to other kinds of ways to see that our world is physically flexible things and surround us containers that help us shape the uh, possibility that we are experiencing uh, for ourselves. And so to get from elastic time to elastic life, the idea is to make this useful, uh, it needs to add like serendipity to our lives. It has to be relevant in some way. And so I think it's tied to some sort of experience cataloging thing. Now that could be stuff that already exists in the world, like your Evernote or whatever you're already using. But it also could be an intentional way of interacting with uh, maybe like a bot that's then passively uh, archiving your log, like a computer log, against your own life. Uh, and it's potentially able to compare your life to other people's lives in ways that were difficult otherwise, not just location wise, but age range wise. If you see the on the elastic time, you have some other kinds of concepts that are layered in here. It has my number of days that I've been alive, it has my year of life, and how many days this year I've been alive. It has a kind of a concept of a chapter, it's really like weeks, but it's my weeks. Uh, and it's today, it's Saturday, which for me is repair day. Usually I wouldn't do anything today, pick some things that feel restorative. And by reserving this thing and linking it to a pattern or it creates an added like intentionality to our lives that isn't a burden, but it's like it's like an intention that's been set for you. It's the default that you've allowed to exist in your life that's beneficial for you. If I happen to want to give a talk today and it's a little stressful for me, that's okay. It's okay. The repair doesn't make me mad at that. But uh, but if it was if I was talking to my GPT this morning about this. Uh, you might keep track of the fact that today you're going against the normal restorative function of your day and maybe next week you feel a little uh, you know, irritated or something. Maybe it's because you over people on Saturday or whatever. And so, uh, and so you feel like you didn't get maybe enough rest. Another kind of layer that I've put on here recently, build a little vibe. Uh, next to ChatGPT, and uh, it's the closest thing that I have right now to Elastic Life. Each morning, uh, my phone sends off, sends off a simple automation that texts my, my bot that automatically texts back to me uh, a way to start my day and a set of perspectives to, to, to take off. And so it's sort of like uh, an optional way of seeing the world when I awake that um, has symmetry for me and that is still interested in me. So it's kind of like guiding my life and my experience from the moment uh, I wake and grab my phone and there's a text waiting for me for my bot. And I can talk to it too um, in response, but maybe that's not how I want to, to interact with it. Um, um, the idea would be to connect these two worlds. So uh, right now my ChatGPT has read and all that stuff sort of lives in, in OpenAI's world, and I don't love that. Um, uh, and I, all my social information lives on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, and I don't, I don't love that. Uh, I would love for the bots to have that, that kind of context, that deep context for me, and the social uh, awareness to know that like these people matter to me, and it's how they matter to me. And I think those are kind of like the next 
layers of sort of integration that exists between you. Uh, what is a natural way to live life uh, and also a natural way to sort of track up and build up and grow your life in a way that's of value for it. So, uh, I, my, I love this project, but I also like it's kind of painful because I don't, I spend my day trying to make SaaS products for the people most of the time. I design things for the people. And it breaks so many of my rules to do these projects because I don't, I don't really know how it's useful. I don't really know. I mean, I do and I don't. Like, I don't know how to explain it properly. And I don't know how to get like the buy in that I want because what I want. I want Apple to care about this. So I want it to be on my device. You know, I want I want to be able to control time. I want like I would want you to be able to say, I don't want the ten thousand moments that Luke chose. I want a thousand moments, or I want it to work this other way. Because it's it's just made up. So so if it were working for you in the way that you wanted it to work for you, and other people by nature accepted that. Like we each have different ways of experiencing the world, and it goes all the way from like time through uh, what we think of as you know serendipitous excitement to to everything, like all those factors. And so, how do we give ourselves control of that, that help us uh, to create the world instead of the long term? Uh, I think that's probably it. If you have questions more specific. Do you want to know about how this works? So this, I think I get it, is taking the daylight hours and making a perceptive amount of them or out to walk on Basically, yeah. So it's so the increment of one, but yeah, it grows the trick. So it's like, for here, one to three seconds-ish. Being with fuzzy person. Which what we would expect from the here. Does it also calculate like more block the 30 seconds in the skin average time? Like, can I, in order to be on time for a thing in my day world, does it calculate that type of thing in their block? No, because it's not for the, so, okay. the, so the best way that I've been thinking about it, although I'm not sure if it's going to hold up yet, I think this is the way that machines should speak to us. And the, the time we're used to is how we should speak to machines. And we haven't had a way for machines to speak to us like a lot of I just think for adoption, like you can't get everyone to do it. Yeah. It's like, uh, what was it Google Plus? You can't get people on it, you're not going to do it. So, I, I like to be a little bit more provocative sometimes, so I'm going to say something to come on now. Uh, if the best people tell everyone else to fuck off, uh, you have to talk to me in the way that I want to be talked to. And I think it changes how it works for everybody. Sorry about the process. I thought you were going to say does the visual the page change based on time of day or time of season or not right now? It, it, uh, the daytime and nighttime block could change a little bit. Uh, it, there's a lot more visual things we can do. I've been really focused on the functional bits and trying to honestly. The first couple of years, I changed the structure quite a lot. I had three units of measure. A lot of it was around trying to make time. Difference. So I felt like people were not treating me well, like, and I wanted to know if I could treat myself well. So this is really like a very self-serving project, um, and, and this feels good to me. I've given it to a few people, but I have got a lot of feedback. I think it's very challenging as a concept, to your point, uh, and just to sort of accept it, I almost need to kind of make it a feel like this, which I really have another bet. Okay. I want to do I think I made the first version of this in 2013, maybe. It's on GitHub. There's a version on there. It has some of the history. I may have had one version before I published on there. Uh, there may actually be one that I have for my favorite that I have kept. What is the biggest challenge you can have for trying to adopt this? Well, getting into it. Like, because. I have to make a passion. 
to get to the last time that I'm always overcoming the preference for it just seems so I almost have to like hide the other clocks in my life, which is very difficult. Um, and the text messages, the region, originally why I started there was I wanted it to invite me into a lot of the time so that I would feel like I was being invited to help my own context in a way that felt more natural. That's, that's been the part of the challenge I've been working on for myself. So how can I make that good? And then also, right now, if I'm holding my own, because you were talking about how you interact with Chechen this morning. Uh, I think my, my single small step forward is just going to be to link to uh, a kind of mental uh, Chrome version of the custom bot in the daily text message to help me uh, launch my experience in the walk. Uh, and then I think I'm going to probably tie the custom to the last of time somehow so that he knows, certainly at least like the day of the week that I'm operating in, because that time so uh, I don't know if I answered your question. And then I guess the other challenge really is I believe. I believe since Facebook had a timeline, that was the most genius event in the world. Because it was a bit of like the worst possible company. And so then they shoved me clear back into their application. And I just like, I really want a timeline that archives my information. So I really want to figure out that dynamic the way that it feels. Because I already. I'm good at putting information and never got a chance to uh, watch that in 2009, and I think Andy Peters was talking about Evernote, and it like resonated so strong that from that day till now, I use Evernote all the time for all my information. But now Evernote's starting to suck, and it's just like all the things that I love in my life like, every five years, and I hate it so much, and I just want it to stop, and I want to like catalog all that information, keep it safe, and like, help me instead of getting like poured off and like stuck in the past. So, the first one is you mentioned that this approach is based on lights and like how the United Cycles work. Have you, uh, have you ever considered implementing like, a weather aspect because that affects, uh, like that affects how like it is in our life. Like, I, I mean, even today, it's pretty cool. Uh, Absolutely, I love that idea. Um, one of my favorite web projects was We Feel Five. Uh, and it's, uh, he wrote a, like a little web on a screen web on that uh, catalog all the all the world's blogs at the time and the weather and he built like this kind of uh, lobby interface where you could explore what people were feeling based upon the weather or it was really cool uh, and i think so yes weather is super interesting uh and i think i think lunar cycles uh, i thought i was going to about that I would like to incorporate both of those things. How does one begin music? Uh, right now, it's just the it's just the HTML JavaScript. That's super simple, very bad code. Uh, so I just copy it, put your birthday in it, and stick it up. So just pass me and I take a version for you. I'll try it. I need to take it one step further. Right, I think that version of it, or you can see that version of it, yeah. Like, that should be all it really means, doesn't it? It actually doesn't need storing it and stuff. So if someone was in your five earlier, it's a little bit of position, so it doesn't have to be stored or keep it, actually, it would have been locked. It just needs it to burn. So, uh, so this seems to be kind of designed around how you naturally experience time or want to experience time. It seems like that's something that varies a lot across cultures. Have you ever looked at, it seems like cultures have very different relationships at time. Have you looked at the event stuff for insights or ideas? Or? A little bit, yeah. Um, I, I've done some research and I definitely have some programs that I like accumulated and thoughts that I've accumulated over time. But I think like, I think there are still some, some, some cultures that are pretty much aligned to this sort of timekeeping. It, it's, it's a natural, rhythmatic, like, 
I think if you just think about the natural way to experience that, it seems like yeah. some, somewhere the side of the path, like the farmer's way, the, 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 the path, or existing yeah. event, the higher gatherers may say, I'm sort of like, choose your activities around that, look at the way that we order our lives, we have a problem with that, but, uh, do you have a question? Oh, I don't know. Sorry. Good question. Oh, I do. Um, sorry. Um, I mean, you're, you're, you're kind of talking about uh, reorienting the uh, perspective that people have towards the relationship they want to express. Um, I think it's, it's, you're, you're touching on something which is, is definitely, it's, it's been physiologically you know, researched. It's, 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 uh, and the, the near physiology of the sleeping cycle, you know, you know, you know, it's a multifaceted system. You have the, you know, the homeostatic release of adenosine that, that pushes, you know, uh, sleep sickness feelings. You have the entire circadian rhythm system and the whole series of, you know, BPL, BLPO uh, states. Uh, uh, kind of on this bicycle on off switch with, with these ascending, uh, ascending arousal system, right? So you're, you're, you're really touching on something that physiologically exists within uh, our, our, our biology. Um, you know, our perceptions of time, physiologically speaking, do not adhere to a day night cycle, do not adhere to you know, some arbitrary, we've decided that this is a moment of time and we've measured it because of cesium atoms vibrate this frequency or whatever the heck it is uh, these days. You know, um, so I really like the idea. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Um, but like, when it comes to like universal application, right? You think that it could be tied, um, you know, to uh, a neurophysiological, you know, aspect of the uh, what what aspects or or, or or markers uh, of a person actually physiologically correlate with these these aspects of time? You hear me this in this graphic intervals. I think so. I, I think I would love to find partners who would help that because like it's definitely okay on what I I would be like research partners with something. But yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, and I'm also interested in potentially like I think there are other biological uh well plants and animals that you hear about personality of so I don't know how and I don't know how to invest in that. Yeah, I mean, and there's, there's life that doesn't care about the sun, like the most synthetic oasis down at the bottom of the tree, right? Great. I mean, it just depends. Source of life. I mean, source of, source of, source of energy. Right. I and mean, that's, that's the important part. Yeah. You know, so you can extract that, rearrange it. It's definitely the relevance. Yeah, yeah, like, I like it. You're on to something really interesting.